all my friends on YouTube. This beautiful May day. 90 degrees out, believe it or not. It was going to get up to 86 today. I think this is May 14th. Yeah, I think May 14th. Although I could be off by a day, as usual, but I think it's May 14th. Hey, I hear a lot of you uh, are saying you're running out of subjects. That's never been my problem. I think I've got too many subjects to talk about today. I may run over seven minutes, but I'll probably just touch on about three of them. First up, um, if you want to catch a couple of uh, really good videos about the Gibraltar um, airport, it's, uh, it's in the territory um, that belongs to the UK, I believe, yeah, UK, and they have an airport runway where you can actually drive across it at 90 degrees with your car and they've got a walkway too. people actually walk and cross it. Obviously not when planes are coming, I'm guessing, I hope. But check out first the Navy Thomas video, I'll put the link down below, where he talks about his experience when he was in the Navy of uh, flying into the Gibraltar airport, which is actually a response to the second video you should watch. Now it's kind of like the reverse order you'll be watching them, but I think they blend together better that way when you watch them in reverse order. Watch Navy Thomas's video on Gibraltar and then watch Darth Peachy's video on Gibraltar where he talks about the whole history of it, not just uh, taking you. He actually takes you to the airport runway and crosses across it twice on his motorcycle. He goes across, does a U-turn. Kind of like if you guys have been following me for a while, I like to do that on bridges, especially the old steel bridges with the... Uh, grading down below where you can look down and see the water below. I like crossing those bridges multiple times, so I'll, well, he does a turnaround and goes across the airport runway twice. Talks about the history going all the way back to uh, pre-ancient times, Talk, talking about how the landform was even formed in plate tectonics, and then moving up to modern day history about uh, who got to own Gibraltar and how and why. So check those two out. And then second, just to give you a little update on what's going on lately in my life, I'm getting ready for my trip for the May 21st meetup down in Kansas City, Grandview actually. And if you've caught any of my, or been keeping up with my videos lately, have the basic information about where and what it is so I won't get into it again on another video anybody interested PM me or you can always contact me but uh, on this last week before I'm leaving I'm thinking everything's going relatively smooth up till now and then what happens my water heater springs a leak not just a little minor leak but on uh, Saturday evening it was, yeah, Saturday evening, I'm hearing this tapping sound coming in the hallway and it's, uh, in the past I've had birds actually perch up on my roof, but not on the roof itself, on the little vent that comes out of your furnace, or in this area it would be the little vent that comes from your hot water heater for the gas fumes to escape. And they'll sit up there and they'll tap on the metal and make this tapping sound. Well, I was hearing this tapping sound so I went over to where it was coming from, and I'm like, this sounds a little bit different than birds tapping, though. And I keep trying to locate the sound, so I look where the hot water heater is, and sure enough, underneath the floor is all wet. So I get to spend the money just before I go on vacation. It's about the same amount of money as my vacation budget, too, on a hot water heater. But I guess in a way it's a blessing, like my wife said, could have happened the day after I left, which things like that do tend to happen, and then got to figure out a way for them to deal with it or call up somebody to deal with it. And you know how those things are. It's like, I think in my area, if you just got to call up somebody and have them come out and put in a hot water heater for you, you're going to think of spending around 750 bucks, depending on what you need. And if it's not a simple uh, drop-in replacement and they've got to really modify a lot of things, you might be talking upwards of uh, $900 or more to have a new water heater put in. So not a fun thing to have to deal with at this time just before I'm going on a trip, but I guess a blessing in a way because I was able to fix it and uh, 
you know, when I get back from my trip, we'll, I'll get it paid off and we'll deal with the other stuff. And the uh, next subject is, let me adjust my idle here. I don't know why for all of a sudden, because maybe because the weather's so hot. Me... There we go. I like that how I can just reach underneath between the two carbs and there's a big knob to adjust the idle, so hope I got that about right. So my third subject I wanted to talk about, and I'll try to keep this video under 15 minutes, is the movie Iron Man. Now I got a Facebook account, my friend on Facebook, Dave, told me he didn't like the movie at all and he talked about the various reasons why he thought it wasn't that good a movie and I will have to in a in a certain way agree with him now I, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the movie but there was something through the whole movie that kept bugging me now the gadgets they had plenty of gadgets plenty of action uh, he thought the comedy was a little much I thought it was it went right up to the edge but I don't think it was in my opinion the comedy wasn't too much it kind of did keep the movie a little bit flowing and more lively but the thing about it that just kept bugging me and especially I think a lot of people that are even more into finding plot holes and finding inconsistencies in a movie is they were just slamming you and slamming you and slamming you in the face I mean the acting was good especially the people that played the bad guys uh, everybody did at least a good job and some people did an excellent job of the acting but man the inconsistencies and plot holes I mean you're just thinking this just does not make logical sense time after time after time and when you just can't go more than 10 minutes in the movie without it slapping you I mean right up against the face I mean I won't do any spoilers but let me say if, if you watched a, a similar movie and you saw they had like a, a hero fighting against the bad guys and the bad guys themselves had some kind of a condition or a, a superhero type of power to where they were resistant to being killed like a you could try bullets, explosions, stuff like that, and uh, they just didn't affect the bad guys. They keep coming and they keep coming, um, and which is not, you know, I'm not saying that's an inconsistency in and of itself. It's not at all. But then suppose sometime in the movie, somebody comes up behind, like a little kid comes up behind the villain and hits him over the head with a stick, and they drop down dead instantly. It's like you're thinking, uh wait a minute now, explosions, bullets, the bad guy couldn't pound the, I mean, the good guy couldn't pound the bad guy to death by beating up on him, and yet a little kid walks up behind him, hits him on the head with a stick, and he's dead. Um, I'm not saying that's exactly what happened, but I think if you really follow the movie, especially towards the end, you'll get my meaning. It's a, it's a similar principle to where uh, it's kind of played out towards the end of the movie. Well, not just towards the end of the movie, I mean, you will constantly see inconsistencies that just don't make sense. Like, uh, it's kind of like taking and giving 15 people a basic plot of a movie, but letting each 15 people write a couple of pages of script so they don't really coordinate with each other. But yeah, if you go to the uh, Internet Movie Database, imdb.com, you'll see they have uh, trivia, and then they'll have mistakes and inconsistencies and continuity mistakes in the movie. Well tell you what this movie there could be three full pages if not five written on this one but still all in all I will say if you're a big fan of gadgets a big fan of Iron Man and uh, can get back get, get past the inconsistencies and the uh, problems it has you can still enjoy the movie somewhat I mean I paid the cheap bargain price plus I got a coupon for a free ticket so I guess you'd really say I got I went with a family member and got um, my tickets for $2.50 a piece after you count the coupon in. So all in all, not a, a bad deal. It's, you know, I'd consider it on the par with uh, renting the movie on a DVD from Blockbuster or uh, sending for the movie with your Netflix account. You don't do that for the uh, five-star movies, but you might do it for a three-star movie. So I'd give this... Uh, out of five stars, uh, if there's nothing else good playing, you could probably watch it two and a half stars, I guess I would give it overall. So 
So that's my uh, kind of a review of Iron Man 3 without doing any spoilers. But I just checked online and it looks like there's a, a few other movies coming up a lot faster than I thought. Star Trek's already at the movie theater, the new Star Trek Into the Darkness, the uh, Fast and Furious 6, I think it is. Although I only saw the first one and I, um, way after it left the theaters, I saw a little bit of the second one, which I couldn't watch it all the way. It was just so bad. So um, the only one that I consider good, but that's only watching one and part of two would be number one. So I couldn't tell you from uh, two being so bad, I couldn't watch it after just the first few minutes. I couldn't tell you about three, four, and five. I just kind of gave up on it, but then I saw the previews, and especially with Vin Diesel and Michelle Rodriguez being back in it, I definitely kind of want to watch that because they can, they're like uh, Samuel L. Jackson, you know, there's certain people that if they're in the movie, they can take a two and a half star movie and bump it up to three and a half stars, even if it's really, really terrible. Well, I think the combination of Michelle Rodriguez and Vin Diesel can do the same thing. Not always, but probably 90% of the time. So anyway, I guess I better drop it right there because I might even be in there for 15 minutes. I don't know. I've been rambling on so long, but people have been asking, why haven't you made a video in quite a while? And actually, truth be known, I, I make about the same amount of videos, but I just have posted less on YouTube and more on some small sites that I belong to because, I don't know, YouTube's just, as you guys know, if you've uh, followed me on Facebook and some of my comments, um, YouTube is really ticking me off bad lately. I'm hoping it gets a little bit better, but um, like everybody else, I'm losing people on my subs list. They're not always, I'm not always getting everything, so I'm missing people's videos that I really want to watch. But if you get a chance, check out my uh, last TDD report. It'll show you how to improve your subscriptions page. Won't fix everything, but might help with some. So anyway, rambled on again. So take care, everybody. Bye.